the response, and then, of course, the subsequent reactions to the brand new video we posted over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel has been nothing short of overwhelming. I would like to lead off by saying thank you to all of you who have signed up over there and are partaking in the content. In that video, we tie an event from the Obama era to what just happened in Butler, Pennsylvania. Now, warning, it's going to be something that might trigger a few folks, but it's the truth. The connections are undeniable. We are in a different world now, post Butler, Pennsylvania event, than we were prior to it. Something very different is going on now. But what if I told you it's also tied to the goddess of destruction, the Hindu goddess of destruction, Shiva, and CERN? There are some very, very strange activities going on now. And once I show you these connections, I don't think people are going to see this event in the same way. Also, Anyone who is familiar with the Florida Maquis channel here on YouTube for any amount of time knows that back in 2019, we did a series of videos talking about a coming event and how the map in North America was going to change radically. These were, of course, referred to as, quote unquote, the map videos. These videos have millions of views, millions. Most of the videos I do now, be lucky to get 10,000. But back then, everybody was paying attention and what if I told you this event in Butler, Pennsylvania proves the point that I was trying to warn America about way back in 2019? Why are all the states in the middle red? Why are some orange? And why are California, Texas, Florida, and these areas up here, why are they green? Well, we're going to get into that too. This event proves it. Now, for those of you who would like to sign up over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, I'll warn you, it's not for everybody. But we have a policy over there that protects everyone. If you'd like to sign up for Battlefield of the Mind style videos, it's only one single U.S. dollar per month. That's the lowest allowable level that they will let me charge. And you have 90 days once you sign up over there to kick the tires. Look at all of the videos. Hundreds of videos going actually back to 2018. Hundreds of videos. Watch them all. If after three months it's not for you, you get a full refund. No questions asked. No problem. And trust me, the most recent video, you're going to want to see. The most recent video, you're going to look at it and go, wow, we forgot about that. But yeah, that's absolutely what's going on. Now, I'm going to say something that you have not heard about what happened on Saturday. But trust me, it's the truth. It doesn't make for good TV. I'm sure there are a lot of guys out there right now former military and guys in intelligence services and investigative services that are thinking this, they're thinking it, but they're not going to get that uh, contributorship on the big MSM channels if they say it. And I'm just going to say it. This was a crime of opportunity. This wasn't planned. Oh, don't mistake what I'm saying. The kid had planned at some point to use a weapon to do something but this was a spur-of-the-moment decision by this kid, by this crooks. Now, I'm sure like, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. How did he know this? How did he know that? He didn't. But he knew how to adapt. He knew how to adapt to the situation, and he had training in that. Now, real quick, Trump shooter bought 50 rounds of ammo hours before the assassination attempt and allegedly had some kind of a transmitter on him for the, the bombs that they found in the van. Now, he may have planned out the issue with the van. That's easy to do and get done ahead of time for some future thing. But why would you wait until the day of to buy the ammo? Think about the issue with the Nashville shooter. Why would you wait until the day of something so critical. We have ammunition shortages all over this country. Why would the shooter have waited until the day of to buy the, buy the ammo? You see, here's, there's some details here that they're not talking about. 
Suspected Trump rally shooter bought 50 rounds of ammo hours before carrying out the attack. Thomas Crooks identified Pennsylvania, blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. His father had 20 weapons. Records reviewed by CNN revealed that the gunman's father had more than 20 legally purchased guns registered to himself. But allegedly, no rounds available, at least to be just grabbed up on the go. Now think about this critically. Sorry about the ads back there. Think about this critically. So he was able to go into some place, easily access one of 20, 20 weapons, but not able to just grab up a box of ammo with it. So what does this tell me? It tells me that there was probably some type of a security protocol his father had put in for his weapons, storing his ammo and his guns separately. Perhaps the ammo under lock and key, but the weapons not. You see, his security plan was, well, let's see, 95 98% effective. But it was 2% ineffective, wasn't it? Now, let's go back. The, the point, pardon me, that I was trying to make with these videos that got millions and millions of views was this. There are millions and millions of gun owners in the country. A small percentage of them have armories. I would say tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, have small armories, like this guy's parent did. 20 weapons. And I'm sure they have some basic plan for their security, but it's only going to take one guy, one time, to be lax for one moment, and the allegation I was making that if there are roaming groups of thugs having been released from prison because we're in a financial collapse, that those roaming groups of unarmed thugs that are basically just petty criminals, if they stumble upon one of these houses, they're going to turn into a cartel overnight because that one guy had that one moment where he was asleep on the couch or whatever and got caught with his pants down and a half a dozen guys are going to get a hold of 20 long guns. And of course, then depriving that particular person of their life and his keys will find the round, find the, the ammunition with the keys. And then they're going to have tens of thousands of rounds of ammunition. See, even if 99% of the guys have a plan to stop that or mitigate that. And if their plan is 98% effective, the risk is incredible. Now, some are saying, Wait a minute, but where did he, how did he get on the roof? How did he know to get on the roof? What this? I'm telling you, this is the key with the Nashville shooter as well. There are games online, Fortnite and one called PUBG, P-U-B-G, stands for Player Unknown Battlegrounds. And the basis of this game is the first thing they do is they teach you how to load, reload, and use many, many, many different weapons. The second thing and what gives you the big dopamine rush in these games is not that you make some kind of a plan with a group of friends and then you go execute a military-style assault on... No. You get dropped in and you've got to first go find the weapon and you've got to go run and hide and shoot. Run and hide and shoot. Because everybody's trying to get everybody else. And you have to adapt to the environment as it is and be able to make decisions very, very quickly. And the longer you last, the more your heart rate goes up. Because everybody else is the enemy. Everybody else is the enemy. And you can play this game over and over and over again and learn, oh, okay, this, this strategy of hiding here didn't work. Or, oh, I was too slow with that. Yeah, that didn't work. And that, no, you know, that weapon's not good for that thing. And you can play this game for hours and hours and hours and hours. It is incredibly popular. Huge dopamine hit. And it teaches you everything you know for that type of a run and gun everybody against everybody else kind of strategy. That is how this kid was able to get. And and look, go look at the reporting that they're not talking about. Many aren't talking about. Jesse Waters actually put me onto this. They were chasing this kid around. They knew this kid was out there. And this kid hid and knew where to hide and how to hide and when to, you know, keep lookout and say, okay, now I've got a chance to bolt. And the kid bolted and made a run for it. This wasn't a plan. This was not a plan. 
This kid got lucky. This kid was born in 2000, two years after 9-11. This kid was born two years after 9-11, was only 13 years old. In another video, I'd said 12. He was 13 years old when Trump became president in 2016. He's 13 years old. He was registered as a Republican, donated 15 measly dollars to Progressive Turnout Project Super PAC in January 2021. That was three years ago. Three years ago, but he was wearing a de demolition ranch shirt. Do not underestimate the power of these games and the thrill that you get from these games. Now, in some of these games, some of the imagery, as you can see on the right here, is very over-hypersexualized. And it's one of those things that a lot of people say, well, the left, they, they, they teach their followers to be violent and they use all of this, these sick things and they, they call threat to democracy and they... Don't sit there and tell me that the right has some monopoly on decency when it comes to kids and it comes to politics and involving their kids in politics and things they shouldn't. This is a real picture. It's not doctored. And all of you ladies out there with your invective about the images that I show on this channel, far, far less offensive than what I've seen in public with kids around being taught to put up the middle finger over something they have no concept of understanding. No concept whatsoever. And as far as this guy, this demolition ranch guy goes, I don't blame him necessarily, but it reminds me of a scene from a movie called Fight Club. How many of you remember Fight Club? It had uh, Ed Norton and... Uh, Brad Pitt, this is, of course, the artist, God rest his soul, Meatloaf, um, and a couple other big names in it. And these guys all, you know, thought they were, oh, poor, poor, uh, picked on little us. We're the throwaways of society. We're going to go live in this abandoned house, and, you know, we're going to be uh, a bunch of anarchists. And then, of course, the character, played by Meatloaf, when they're out doing one of their little anarchist terrorist things, gets uh, cranialized. And the Edward Norton character looks at all these guys and he says, you morons, what the hell did you expect was going to happen? What did you think was going to happen? Going around, running around, acting like a bunch of morons. Yeah, you were going to get engaged. Somebody was going to lose their life doing what you were doing. You're a bunch of morons. What did this guy think was going to happen? What did this guy think was going to happen? His channel wasn't for adults only. Especially with all the games that are out there. And then this in reality. I know you think this is too simple, but kids are simple minded and very impressionable. Let me say it again. Kids are very simple minded, black or white and impressionable. This is the whole argument made about the whole drag queens in schools reading stories. But this is fine. But this is fine. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are like, okay, yeah, good point, Maquis, but you talked about other things that seem more important to us. How many of you remember the story in the Bible of the Queen of Sheba? Sounds very close to Sheba, doesn't it? It's see, the woman's name in the Bible wasn't Sheba. She was the Queen of Sheba. Shiva. You see, that's that's an interesting distinction. And oh, by the way, for also you, you MAGA types that like to take issues with my channel, both here and on Patreon about the imagery, here is an image from 1959. Donald Trump was 13 years old. Donald Trump was 13 years old when this movie came out, Solomon and Sheba. And this is Gina Lola Brigida going full Miley Cyrus twerk for um, Yul Brenner playing the character of Solomon. Now, this is a story from the Bible. This is a story from the Bible. But I hear all these stories about, you shouldn't show images like this, that, and the other. 
There is nothing that wasn't going on in 1959 that didn't happen in 2013 on stage at the VMAs. Now, you might have called this a little bit more classless and a little more in-your-face and a little more grungy than what was being shown back then, but make no mistake, this was 1959. This was 64 years ago. Gina Lola Brigida had basically it all taken off and she was doing her thing, grinding whatever, for Solomon back then. So I don't want to hear that. Now, what does this have to do with anything, this Queen of Shiva? A lot of people have talked about the Queen of Shiva, the Queen of the South. Um, and even in the, in the paintings, they have to blur the paintings in certain videos because of what Solomon did. Solomon even though he was a great, wonderful, and wise leader, fell to the captivations and the machinations of this very beautiful, very intelligent woman and fell under her spell and began to worship false gods, even though he himself was a vaunted leader of, of Israel. He fell to the uh, plying trade of a very intelligent, seductive woman now. Ladies, quick poll, quick poll, just the ladies, just the ladies out there. Let's say your know, friend says, I have a, a guy that you would love. I have a guy and he is um, amazing. He's, he's completely MAGA. He's got a really great beard. You know, would you like to meet him? I've met the guy. You'd like, you know, he's, I've showed him your picture. Would you like to go have dinner with him? And you agree. And the guy shows up and sit down. He's... Of course, he's got his hair cut nice and got his nice beard, but he's wearing eyeshadow and eyeliner. Does he get a second date? Do you finish the first or do you send a text to one of your girlfriends so that she calls you and creates some emergency for you to get the hell out of there? Now, a lot of people don't like my taking issue with JD fans because of him being, well, basically a, a never Trump or Democrat that said all these things, but he has seen the light. He didn't see the light until he needed to get reelected in the Senate. But there's more you need to know. There's more you need to know. Meet Usha Chilakuri Vance, Indian origin wife of Donald Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance. See, Usha and J.D. Vance first met at Leo Law School when they were married in 2014, with a Hindu priest presiding over a separate ceremony. And if you read through this article, the man is 39 years old, by the way, and has a net worth of $5 million. 39 years old, been in the Senate for five seconds, and he already has a net worth of $5 million. Oh, but he represents the working men and women of America. She's far wealthier than he is. Litigator, national firm, Impressive academic background, holds a bachelor's in history from Yale, master of philosophy from Cambridge, um, distinguished career field, clerked for Supreme Court Justices John Roberts, Brett Kavanaugh. You go on down the list of all of her different things and accomplishments. Now, real quick about Hindu false gods. How many of you can tell me what the first commandment of the Bible is? How many of you can tell me what the first commandment of the Bible is? Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Some of you might erroneously believe that the man is a Christian. He's not. Here's a picture of his wedding. They had simultaneous ceremonies so that she can continue. Remember, being married, one man, one, one, man, one woman, one flesh. One man, one woman, one flesh, right? God sees the married couple as one flesh. Little dot right here on his forehead. Little mark on his forehead. Little mark on his forehead. Trump vice president pick reveals how his Hindu wife helped him. Upbringing in a religious household. And how uh, having two different faiths and their kids being raised to worship Shiva, real quick, Shiva is a Hindu god, member of the Hindu trinity, along with Brahma and Vishnu. 
The worship of Shiva is called Shaivism, and it is one of the three main forms of modern Hinduism, along with Vaishnavism and Shaktism. Shaivism, oh, by the way, um, Tulsi Gabbard is Vaishnavism. Shaivism is a large Hindu denomination with many sub-traditions, including devotional dualistic theme, theism, and yoga-oriented monistic non-theism theme, theme ugh, non-theism. Shiva worship is most common in southern India and southern India in Queen of the South, southern India, and Kashmir. Shaivic cults have developed in these regions that emphasize certain aspects of the goddess of destruction. Shiva. In these articles, she talks about how she keeps him in line. Where is it? J.D. Vance has often credited Usha for her support. In his success, during a 2020 interview with The Megyn Kelly Show, Vance described his wife as a powerful female voice guiding him. Usha, a powerful female voice, like the Queen of Sheba and Solomon, guiding him. Usha definitely brings me back to earth if I get a little too cucky or a little too... Pro- oh, wait, did I say this? A little too... Yeah, I guess that's right. A little too cucky. Um, or a little too proud. I remind myself that she's way more accomplished than I. So I guess uh, sometimes he finds himself a little too cocky. That's who's one hair's breadth away from leading our country. And if he, he will now bring, of course, his wife into the White House, where they will begin to worship false gods. Where they will begin to worship false gods. The Queen of Sheba, royalty and strength. This is not new. This is not new. This is foretold in the Bible. And I had another picture talking about, and I didn't bring it up. We have Vivek, Vivek Ramaswamy. We have Tulsi Gabbard. We have Nikki Haley. And now we have the second lady who's going to be in the White House being a worshiper of false gods. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me or build idols. And right now, right now at the, uh, let's see if I can get the right picture up here. Right now at the Republican National Convention, what is the theme? What is the theme? They said it multiple times. Make America great. No, they changed it. Make America wealthy again. Mammon confirmed. Mammon confirmed. Maybe I should just go back to, uh, to this. Maybe this would be the smartest place to go. Because this will tell you all you need to know. See the uh, statue in the background? The building of idols, the worshiping of mammon, the worshiping of false gods. That's what's coming. That's where we're at right now. See, everybody's focused on some kid. Some kid played a little bit of Fortnite, played a little bit of PUBG, and found a target of opportunity. When something far more ominous is going on. Way more ominous. Believe me. There was a guy who uh, prophesied what was going to happen with Trump. Most people didn't listen to the rest of the prophecy. Right after Trump gets re-inaugurated, massive financial collapse. And when the massive financial collapse comes... You watch how fast the center part of this country turns into a giant PUBG Fortnite game where it's everybody against everybody else. And I don't care if you've got 20 guns. You can only hold one at one time. I don't care if you've got 25 guns. You can only fire one at one time. And one thing every every one of these kids will tell you, go play the game. See how long you last. It is a free-for-all, these games. 
It is a free-for-all. You don't know where the enemy is. Could be behind you, could be in front of you, could be in the next room. You think it's in front of you and then it's behind you again. You've got to learn to run and hide and do it fast and adapt. And most people who play this game die in a matter of seconds. In only a matter of seconds because they don't know how to hit, run, and move. Hit, run, and move. And the nice thing, of course, about these games is you can see what strategies work and see which ones don't. But usually, it's a lot of matter of dumb luck. It's a lot of matter of dumb luck. There's some basic things you got to know, some basic things that are always wrong, and some things that are most of the time right. But believe me, believe me when I tell you this kid just got lucky. This kid was just right place, right time. And he missed. And that's the point. He missed. Most of the time and most of the time in PUBG and Fortnite you do. But he got close. When this comes out, if they reveal it, that's what they're going to reveal about this kid. Why in the world would you wait to buy the rounds that day? If it was some long, well thought out plan where he scoped everything out. He didn't. He didn't. So, once again, if you want to know the connection with the Obamas, join us, Florida Maquis Patreon channel, one single U.S. dollar. There's a $5 level over there as well. God bless all of you who signed up there. I very, very much appreciate it. But trust me when I tell you, you can complain all you want about the images that I show over there. This was the big screen. Grandma and Grandpa. How old were your grandparents in 1959? Those of you out there in the sound of my voice, especially you Gen Xers, how old were Graham and Grandpa in 1959? How old? So I'm probably doing the math right now. Well, gosh, they'd, they would have been there. They would have been about J.D. Vance's age. They'd have been about 30, 39 years old. So yeah, they would have been in the theaters. You know, the boomers, the ones always waggling their finger at the, the, uh, the, the modern generation, their degenerate images. Ask them about the movie, Solomon and Sheba. And what was going on here. And all the anti-biblical crap that was going on in this for entertainment. And make no mistake, back then it was about entertainment and about making money too. So just saying. You think you got some lock on decency? Because you're a let's go Brandon type? F. Biden? And this is, this is emblematic. This is a great example of what I've seen. A lot of millennial-ish gun gym bros do with their kids. It's sick and disgusting in this context. I can't tell you how long it would have been before I would have been able to sit down if my parents had caught me given the finger to any adult, for any reason, ever, whatsoever. At that age. I wouldn't have been able to sit down for a week. I guarantee it. And I'm sneaking suspicion there's a lot of people out there in my audience right now too going, yeah. Yeah, me too. Me too. So I will leave it there. Battlefield of the mind. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.